Okay, in this video, I am going to try to figure out this um, sort of probability question that was requested on my YouTube channel. I'm not 100% sure about my answer to this. I should say that up front. Um, but I think I figured it out, and I'm going to go ahead and post what I think. If I'm wrong, somebody call me out on it, and uh, we will all learn together. First of all, this problem is going to involve something called the fundamental counting principle. And the idea is this. Um, forget about this problem for a second. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, imagine you're at an ice cream shop. And uh, at this ice cream shop, you have, uh, you can, whoa, it's supposed to be cones. You can choose what kind of cone you want and you can choose what kind of ice cream you want and you can choose what kind of topping you want to put on it uh... you know you got sprinkles and uh, some other things so imagine that there are three different kinds of cones and there are let's say six different kinds of ice cream and there are five different toppings to choose from if you wanted to figure out the number of different cones you could make, you know, including um, a cone, you know, one cone, one ice cream, and one topping, how many different uh, ways can you build this ice cream cone? You could use the fundamental counting principle, and uh, it goes like this. It's like how many ways can you do cones? times how many ways can you do ice cream times how many ways you can do toppings. So you could just do 3 times 6 times 5 and that would tell you the total number of ways. Um, so this would be there's 90 different cones you could make. This is one day <laughs> this is one way you could do a license plate problem. If you wanted to make license plates that had three letters and three numbers and you wanted to figure out how many unique license plates you could make you could ask yourself okay how many ways can you choose each letter uh, there are 26 letters so there are 26 ways you could choose the first letter 26 ways you can choose the second letter 26 ways you can choose the third letter um, when it comes to numbers um, there are 10 numbers 0 through 9 uh, so that would be 10 times 10 times 10. If you multiply this all together, that'll give you the number of unique license plates you could make. Um, now it gets a little bit more interesting if you add in the restriction that um, neither the letters nor the numbers can repeat. Okay, so can't repeat. All right, and this will tie back into to the original problem, so be, be patient. Um, imagine that the letters are not able to be repeated. So um, if we use A, then we can't use A again. So when we ask ourselves how many ways can we choose the first letter, um, that's 26. But now you have to imagine that we've chosen a letter. By the time we get to the second letter, we only have 25 letters left. And by the time we get to the third letter, there's only 24 options left. Okay, that's what happens if you can't repeat. And it's the same thing with numbers. Um, if they can't repeat, then uh, for the second number, you only have nine to choose from. And for the third number, you only have eight. So multiply these together, and it will tell you how many license plates uh, you could make um, if you're not allowed to repeat repeat the letters or numbers. All right, now getting closer to the actual problem, I need to say a word about permutations and combinations. Um, if I said, uh, first, uh, here are the first 20 letters of the alphabet. If I said, hmm, I want to make a list, um, huh, that's not how you spell list. I want to make a list of six letters. Okay, and I'm saying list because I'm hinting that the order matters. So I could make a list that went like this. Um, a, C, F, 
D J I. Okay, that would be one list. Okay, um, now I'm counting. I'm counting it as a different list. If I if I reverse the order, if I said, for example, C A F D J I, I would count this as another list. Okay, um, if I wanted to know all the ways I could make a list of six numbers. This is called a permutation. When the order matters, if I'm counting these two lists as separate and different lists, I'm talking about permutations. So I've got 20 letters total, and of those 20 letters, I'm picking six. All right, so I can use a function on my calculator to figure out how many of these lists uh, I can make. Um, and I say to myself, 20 pick 6 uh, to remind, I say the pick to remind me that I'm doing a permutation. And that is a function on my calculator. So I can do 20 and then um, here's my probability thing. So I'm going to click on that. Option number one is for permutation. So I'm going to do that. So this is how I do 20 pick 6 on my calculator. Um, so boom, you're looking at the number. So that's how many ways, um, that's how many lists of six I could make out of uh, the 20 letters in the alphabet, uh, the first 20 letters of the alphabet. Okay, um, so that's permutations. Now, imagine that I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about lists anymore. I just, I'm talking about groups now. Uh, the order doesn't matter. I just want a group of six, just a group. So to emphasize that I'm just talking about a group, I, I don't think I'll even put them in a line this time. I'm going to draw sort of a circle to remind myself that this is just a group and the order doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly pick some letters here, um, S, G, uh, C, T, M, K. All right, I randomly picked a group of six. Now the order here doesn't matter. So if I rearrange these, it would still uh, count as the same group. It wouldn't count as a different group. So if I'm just talking about groups where the order doesn't matter, now I'm talking about uh, combinations. Instead of permutations, I'm talking about something called combinations. Um, so now I'm saying, okay, I have 20 letters, all right, 20 things to choose from, and I'm choosing six at a time. Notice I say choose um, to remind myself to use the letter C whenever I do combinations. And I say pick when I'm doing permutations. So this is a 20 choose six situation. Okay, and again, I could do this on my calculator. Um, and just I could just do the same 20, go to my probability. It's a combination because the order doesn't matter. So 20 choose 6. All right? So if the order doesn't matter, um, there's a far smaller number of groups that I could make. And here it is. Okay, now we're finally ready to do the actual problem. Okay, so we're going to put, tie all this together. The fundamental counting principle and permutations or combinations. Okay, so a manager wants to assign 20 workers to four distinct construction jobs. These jobs require six, four, three, and seven workers respectively. In how many different ways can the manager assign the workers? Okay, um, now I'm going to make these lines representing the groups. Okay, so there are four different groups of workers. Um, the first group will be a group of six. The second group will be a group of four. Um, the third group will be a group of three. And the last group will be a group of seven. 
Okay, focus on the first group of six. If I, and, and um, remember I wrote down the first 20 letters of the alphabet and they're talking about 20 workers. So imagine that each one of these letters represents a person. Okay, um, so if I want to know how many ways I could choose this first group of six. Um, for example, I could choose um, F, K, T, um, P, E, B. All right, this would be a group of six. All right, that's, that's one way I could do it. Um, but if I want to ask myself, how many ways? Like, what's the total number of ways I could have done that? I could have picked this group of six. Um, notice the order doesn't matter. We're talking about a group of workers. It, it, it makes no difference whatsoever um, in what order we say their names or anything like that. So because we're just talking about groups of people and the order doesn't matter, we are talking about combinations, okay, not permutations. So, there are a total of 20 workers to choose from, and I am choosing 6. Alright, so this would give me the total number of ways um, that I could choose uh, a group of 6. Now, um, remember the fundamental counting principle. If I could figure out the total number of ways I could choose a group of 4, and a group of 3, and a group of 7, I should be able to just multiply these all together and then that would give me the answer. Just like when we had um, how many ways could we choose a cone and how many ways could we choose the ice cream um, and how many ways could we choose the toppings. Ha! That was horrible. Um, and we just multiply those all together, remember? Um, so this should be the same thing using the fundamental counting principle. I should be able to multiply all these together. Now be careful though, um, because when I get to the group of four, I no longer have 20 people to choose from. Um, I've already picked six people in, uh, for the previous group. So by the time I get uh, to the group of four, I've already chosen six, so um, that means um, I'm only going to have 14 people left. So I have a, uh, 14 people and I'm going to choose four of those. Um, and then when I get to the group of three, again, I don't have 20 left. Um, I don't even have 14 anymore, all right, because now I've chosen six people and four people, so I've chosen a total of ten people already. So that means there are only ten people left. Alright, so I have ten people and now I'm choosing my three. Okay, well I had ten people, now I've chosen three. So by the time I get to uh, the last group here, I only have uh, seven people left. Alright, so I have seven people left and I'm choosing seven people. So it's like seven choose seven. Now, so this tells me how many ways I can choose my group of six and then how many ways I can choose my group of four. This will give me how many ways I can choose a group of three and when all that's done, how many ways I can choose my group of seven. Um, so I can use my calculator to find all these numbers and multiply it all out. Now, really, I could do this individually, um, or I could just put it all in my calculator all at once. Okay, some of these are going to be pretty big numbers. So, for example, if I do 20 choose 6, um, oh yeah, we already did that. So that's 38,760. Okay, now 14 choose 4. That's 1,001. 
and uh, 10 choose 3. That's 120. And then this is going to be 1. OK, so if we multiply these all together, that should be the total number of ways I can do this. So I'm just going to punch this in off camera. But I'm doing uh, 38,760 times 1,001 times 120. And, and of course, I'm not going to bother with the 1. And this is what I got. Um, let's see, there's a lot of numbers here. So 4, 6, 5, 5, 8, 5, 1, 2, 0, 0. Okay, what is that? 4 billion? Um, 655,851,200. That's how many ways you could do this. That is what I think. I could be wrong, um, but that's my best guess.